Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Recently on the channel, we put together a $280 budget gaming PC. And with that video, kind of showed you where to get all the parts, what's going on here, and we ran Windows on it. But since then, I've had a lot of people asking about Steam Deck OS or a very similar operating system. So that's what we've got here today. And I can tell you right now that this at $280 with this operating system is an absolutely amazing performer. I completely understand that the Steam Deck is portable, but if you're not looking for portability and you want to save some money, this thing blows it out of the water. Okay, so what we've got here is a fully functional $280 gaming PC. If you're interested in checking out the build, I'll leave a link to that initial video. I've got links and everything. I'll also leave those down below in the description of this video. And yeah, you could definitely put a cheap PC like this together. And one of the main ways I saved a lot of money on this is the GPU I opted to use. Now I picked this up on AliExpress for $33. It's a brand new RX 580. At least that's what the listing says. In my first video, we actually did a teardown at the end just to check out the chip. And it turns out it's actually an RX 570X with a BIOS flash. So everything does kind of show up as an RX 580, but the clocks are a bit lower on the memory. All in all, I would suggest buying a real RX 580. You're going to spend about $65 getting a used one on eBay. But you know, if you know what you're getting into with something like this and you wanted to save the money, this actually works out pretty well. And that's what we're going to be using in this video. When it comes to the case, I picked this up on eBay. It's a Rosewell that comes with that 400 watt power supply. We've also got two PCIe 8 pin connectors. We only need one for this uh, fake RX 580. I also got the motherboard in a package deal with 16 gigabytes of RAM included. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links down in the description. And if you just want to run Windows on it, you can check out my initial video. But just give you a quick rundown on the specs here. Cut a little bit of cost off the top, I went with the AMD Ryzen 5600 non-X variant, 6 cores, 12 threads. I also picked up a Spire cooler on eBay for $15. Now if you get one of these new or the 5600X, chances are you will get a cooler with it and you'd be fine with what you have. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 mega transfers per second running in dual channel. And of course we've got that AMD Radeon RX 580, it's not really a 580, it's actually an RX 570X with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Of course most people are going to go ahead and install Windows and it will run. You actually can play games at 1080p, some of the stuff you will have to drop down to 900p. But I wanted to install Linux, more specifically a Linux distro that kind of gives us that Steam Deck feel. So I opted to use Chimera OS. I'll leave a link to the official Chimera OS website down below. Easy to install, rolling updates, awesome compatibility, and it does come with Proton GE built-in. Plus we get all of those little features that the Steam Deck has with this operating system. Now you could go and install Manjaro or something like that, but I kind of wanted a full-fledged gaming operating system, and Chimera does offer that for me. All right, so jumping right into the operating system, I gotta say, I was actually blown away by the performance this thing's putting out. Now, it's not a 4K or a 1440p gaming machine, but for 1080p gaming and Linux with such a cheap price tag, this thing does way better than I thought. And in fact, I'm actually seeing better performance over here with Linux than I was in Windows when we initially did the build. With Chimera OS, we've got access to all of the Steam Deck goodies. So we can actually bring up our performance overlay right here. And it just kind of... Uh, takes up a lot of space, but I'm going to go right here. I've disabled the frame limiter and I want to keep this disabled for all of the games. We've got HDR support. We can allow tearing. Only thing that's not going to work in this operating system for a PC like this is our TDP limit or manual GPU clock. If I try to enable this, you can see we only go up to 15 watts. It's hard coded for the Steam Deck APU. We do have access to system wide FSR and I'll give you a look at the specs here from settings system, AMD Ryzen 5 5600, 6 cores, 12 threads, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM running at 3200, and we've got that RX 580 2048SP because we do have 8 gigs of VRAM here. Everything with this setup work, audio, ethernet, the motherboard that I'm using doesn't support Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so uh, we didn't have to worry about that. I've just got ethernet plugged in. But so far, really good experience. I'm pretty surprised by what this thing can do. And now I want to jump into some gameplay and show you exactly what we're working with here. Under $280 for a little machine like this could be worth it to a lot of people out there. And the first game we're going to jump into is Spider-Man Miles Morales. 
Still has to process those Vulcan shaders, just like the Steam Deck, but it, but it goes a lot quicker with this 5600. All right, so here's Spider-Man Miles Morales, and I want to get into the settings just to show you here. We're at medium 1080, and I am using the IGTI upscaling method set to balanced. Personally, I've just had better luck using this instead of FSR with this game. Well, I should say better luck on lower end GPUs and iGPUs. But once we get into gameplay, you can see it does look good. We're only at balanced with that scaling, medium settings, and we got an average of 74 FPS out of this game. Not too shabby. Now, again, we're not at 1440p, we're not at 4K, but the price doesn't reflect that either. Next up, Doom Eternal, 1080p, medium, no scaling. We didn't have to change the render resolution whatsoever. I've got the built-in performance metrics on the left-hand side, and I've also got the game's performance metrics up on the right-hand side. By the end of this gameplay, we had an average of 91 FPS on this $280 PC. Now, I know it's an older game, but comparing this to Windows with this same setup, I was only seeing an average of around 70 with Doom Eternal. Here's Helldivers 2, and uh, this was one that really kind of gave me much better performance in Linux than it did with Windows. When I tested this on Windows, we had an average of 58 FPS, low, FSR set to performance, 1080p. Right now, we're at 1080p, low, with FSR only set to balance, we're getting an average of 74 FPS out of this game. Much more playable here in Linux than it was in Windows, and it does look a lot better given that we only have to take FSR to balance instead of performance. Here's Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium, average of 93 FPS, and I knew that this game was going to run well. It's just a really well-optimized game that works on basically everything that I've tested it with. Mortal Kombat 1, 1080p, medium, constant 60 FPS. I mean, we do get a couple little fluctuations coming down, but you know, if that frame counter wasn't on, nobody would ever really even notice it. Awesome performance here, and it is outperforming Windows, which is really odd. I, mean, I know that we have those really great Radeon Linux drivers here, but it's pretty impressive to see what kind of performance this thing's putting out when it comes to gaming versus Windows. Here's PAL World, 900p low settings, and we're seeing about the same thing with uh, Windows, maybe a little better performance over there. Soon as FSR is added to the game, this will definitely be up. I'd say 1080, I'd say, I'd say 1080p, medium, low mix, FSR set to balanced. We could run this at 60 FPS and have a pretty good time with it. But right now you see it dipping under. Playing these easier to run games at 120 hertz is great. We've got Hades here, 1080p. Not many settings that we can mess around with except for the resolution. And through my testing, it really hasn't hurt or helped much through, uh, you know, even lower end iGPUs. The game runs well on a lot of things, but uh, you know, we're at 120 hertz here, super smooth gameplay. And these indie games are just gonna run great. And the final thing we've got here is Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p with the low preset. I'm just using the built-in benchmark, and usually when I go into this game, I go into the settings and turn everything to low, because the low preset actually has a few things set to medium. I didn't have to do that for this, and at the end, we had an average of 78 FPS. Of course, we do have FSR set to performance, and that's kind of how it is with these lower-end GPUs, but it's great to see that we can actually play this game over 60 on a $280 gaming PC. So overall, I mean, for the price, this isn't shabby at all. Even with Windows, not a horrible performer, but, you know, after testing Linux on something like this, I think that's kind of the way to go if that's what you want to do. You will get better performance than a lot of these games, and if you went with a real RX 580 with those higher clocks on the uh, memory and the GPU clock, you could see a little better performance. It's definitely not going to be a huge difference, but if you spend just a little bit more money up front, you know, you'll have a true RX 580 instead of kind of a makeshift 580 from that 570X with that BIOS flash. Again, it's not a top of the line machine and these RX 580s or even RX 570Xs are kind of reaching end of life when it comes to newer AAA games. So if you did want to build something like this, I would go ahead and jump on it. I'll leave links in the description to where you can get everything that I used here. I've picked up most of the stuff on eBay. 
Storage was bought new on Amazon. And uh, you know, if you just wanna run Windows on something like this, I'll leave a link to that video down below. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, 